Hello, I'm Professor Gunnar Grün from the Fraunhofer Institute for Building Physics, IBP. I will be presenting you our final module in the city of Agatala, starting with an overview of the construction. The light gauge steel frame system is the construction system that will be examined in this module. And as was the case with the five previous modules, this system will be looked into from a building physics perspective. An overview of the construction in the Lighthouse project in Agatala, in addition to the topics of durability, heat and moisture, comfort, energy efficiency, will be explored. Lastly, a research overview will be given for this construction type used in Agatala. The construction overview will be given for Agatala, focusing on the type of construction used, the process by which it is realized, and the challenges that arise. An overview of the other topics to be discussed in this module will be presented in the end of this unit. Here we can see a video showing the rendering of what the lighthouse projects in Agatala is meant to look like. As the project is still in construction phase, this video gives us an understanding as to what the end result to be expected is. 1000 housing units are to be built by the end of this project. In the lighthouse project in Agatala, this structural system comprises of pre-engineered building, PEB, and light gauge structural systems, LGSF. The PEB system is made up of the hot rolled steel eye sections for beams and columns forming a frame. And this can be seen in the picture on the left hand side from the Agatala project site. The sections are then assembled and erected on site, resulting in a robust structure. The innovative construction type used here, illustrated on the right, the light gauge structural system is used as a wall paneling system. The panels are manufactured in a factory by cold roll forming machines and the components are galvanized to prevent corrosion. Additionally, they are in a form of C cross sections, having a high strength to weight ratio. Similarly to the pre-engineered structural system, the LGSF elements are then assembled on site. The panels can be used for structural or non-structural purposes, and in this project they are used as non-structural components. They come in a form that makes them ready for connections, and cutouts for windows, doors, ventilators and other elements can be incorporated in the factory or created on site. The panels are encased with cement concrete panels, which are fixed on both sides of the wall, and the space in between is then filled with lightweight concrete. The process by which these panels are created in the factory will be shown in an upcoming slide in an example video. But first let us start with the foundation of the building. Starting with the substructure, a pile foundation is used in this case due to the marshy nature of the ground in Agatala and the results of the geotechnical investigation which was carried out. This process starts with the laying out and marking of piles on the field, followed by boring which is carried out with the use of hydraulic rigs. Helical reinforcement contained with steel cages are then lowered into the dugout bores. After which the boreholes are flushed out with bentonite slurry. In the final step, concreting is done through trimming pipes in piles. To connect the substructure to the superstructure, a raft is primarily laid to connect the piles together. Afterwards, 
RCC pedestals or stem columns are cast on top of the raft and up to the plinth level. This is followed by an RCC plinth beam and grade slab to connect the columns at plinth level. Lastly, base plates and anchors are put in place so that the pre-engineered steel frame structure is ready to be erected. As mentioned previously, here is the video showing computerized code roll forming process by which LGSF panels are made and their installation. Following this substructure, the process of the superstructure begins. Prefabricated components of the PEB system are brought to the site, aligned and erected to form the steel frame structure. The elements are joined using cranes and connections as per the design. Subsequently, deck slabs comprising of galvanized steel deck sheets are installed on the structural frame, followed by the pouring of concrete screed on the deck sheet with reinforcement. Slabs can be cast quickly in this case as no shuttering is required, with the deck sheet acting as formwork. This step is followed by the installation of wall panels, namely the LGSF ones. They come with built-in notch dimpling slots and service holes for the connections and are assembled using self-driven metal screws to create wall structures. As stated earlier, the cement concrete panels are fixed on both sides of the wall and filled with lightweight concrete as a final step. We have another rendering video showing how part of the units will look like in the Lighthouse project in Agatala. With this type of special construction method, building challenges may occur. We will now look at the possible ones while focusing on the particular conditions and project in Agatala. With this, we have gone through the final construction overview as part of the Lighthouse projects. As in the other modules of this series, this module is divided into six submodules also. Based on the information about the project, within this introduction submodule, the second submodule will deal with the heat and moisture transport. In particular, we will look at internal gains and the storage capacity of the buildings. In the third part, we will deal with energy efficiency and, in the course of this, we'll focus on the calculation of the complete balance. If you have watched all the videos, you now have a comprehensive view on all parts of the balance equation, so we will sum this up in calculating it. In the fourth submodule, we will have a look at the question of how to measure hydrothermal properties, i.e. the characteristic values of materials in the laboratory and why it is done at all. And we will also look at which values are good and which are bad. For example, we will look at the hydrothermal vapor diffusion values and the water uptake of materials. In the penultimate part, which deals with thermal comfort considerations, we will then look at the possibility of adaption of the PMV model to different climate zones. What does this actually mean and how could it help in enhancing the comfort evaluation in India? Finally, 
we will look into the future and give you an overview of what is being researched in the building industry at the moment. Of course, at the moment it's a lot about the topic of CO2 in the building industry and what role bio-based materials play. Therefore, we will have a look at bio-based material, how they have and will be used in the construction sector. I would like to thank you for your attention and I will see you in the other videos that await you to further explore the Lighthouse project in Agatala.